On February 18th, Country Garden, one of the biggest Chinese real estate companies, found itself in the center of a massive online movement. The topic of Country Garden Good Pay Season swept through all major social media platforms throughout China and rapidly became a trending topic on Weibo. As the migrant workers are often dubbed as maliciously demanding salary, this time the Country Garden's employees asking for a withheld salary campaign was well organized. They have prepared professional slogans, videos, and beautifully designed posters. It is extremely evident that this movement is clearly orchestrated by a large body of people, with sources estimating over 2,000 people participating in this online movement. This has thus led the media to call this the largest wage campaign in the history of Chinese real estate. The morning before, Country Garden had organized an online training meeting for its sales support division. Due to the company's recent executions of large scale employee layoffs, many were rightfully concerned about the fate of their personal livelihoods, as well as if they would get their year end bonus, which were in reality a portion of their salary deliberately withheld by the company. As such, the online comments of the meeting were filled with outrage, causing the meeting to become suspended over this topic. What makes the situation even more suspicious is that Country Garden not only spent 3.48 billion US dollars on mergers and acquisitions, but had even spent 47.5 million US dollars to sponsor CCTV's Lantern Festival Gala in 2021, while many of their marketing employees still had their year end bonuses unpaid. During this meeting, thousands of marketing employees decided to rise up against the injustice. While the meeting was going on, one anonymous employee quietly established a QQ group chat for wage demand organization, which rapidly attracted five to six hundred members. In order to create exposure for their movement, they had people work on several different aspects of the movement, such as poster design, curating Weibo topics, etc. Eventually, they decided to create a trending hashtag to spread awareness of their movement, hashtag Country Garden Good Pay Season. Under their professional execution, the hashtag flooded social media platforms, shooting up into the top 30 trending list of searches. What really surprised people the most were the professionally designed posters, which were designed by a former Country Garden employee who had recently been laid off. The design was made in just one night, similar to an old controversy with Country Garden, where in 2018, workers were forced to complete the engineering works of a new community overnight. Four years later, this efficiency has clearly backfired on the company. According to the employees, the company has been withholding 20% of their monthly wages to be paid out uniformly at the end of the year to give the illusion of a year-end bonus. Even the real merit bonuses given to hardworking individuals were withheld by up to 50%, distributing the rest at the end of the year as another year-end bonus when in reality, these paychecks were already supposed to be a part of their normal salary. To make matters worse, only a portion of the withheld salary is returned to the worker. According to Country Garden's year-end bonus program, ordinary employees get 90% of the withheld salary back, while managers and higher positions get 80 and 70% back respectively. Seeing as the withholding of 20% of their salary is already a crime, taking off even more money from that withheld salary is even more intolerable for the employees. To add on to the problems, Country Garden only completed 88.34 billion US dollars in sales during 2021, a far cry from their initial target of 126.66 billion US dollars. As such, the company's 106 different regions were quickly reduced to 65, laying off a third of their marketing staff. However, more layoffs are to be expected as the company lays off a set of people to fit a quota. For example, if there are 50 employees, but the regional marketing positions were set at 20, they would have to lay off 30 people. As such, it is speculated that by March, up to a half of Country Garden's workforce will be laid off. Especially with the diminishing of projects, people worry that layoffs will still continue. Some regions do not plan to lease land parcels from the government to develop real estate projects. Country Garden's layoff methods are also quite sinister. For example, in order to avoid compensating laid-off workers, they try to force people to leave through demotions, pay cuts, transfers, 
and the revoking of certain worker benefits. Even for the employees who do get laid off, the company showed no mercy. While some real estate and property sector employees will still get all the layoff compensation listed, many in the marketing field have to choose between getting their year-end bonus back or receiving their layoff compensation. In some of the regions, only a month's worth of salary is given as compensation, while in extreme cases, two weeks of pay is all they get. Facing an unscrupulous company, employees have no choice but to band together against a large business. Soon after the group chat began trending on Weibo, it was discovered by Country Garden and as such were forced to dissolve. Overnight, the related topics vanished from the website. However, in the face of such a massive corporation, many of the employees nonetheless stood their ground. They quickly organized a new group leader and set up another group chat for salary claims. The group has since grown to over 2,000 people now. The professional experiences obtained through their work is now being used to fight against the company for unpaid salary. On the night of February 18th, Country Garden quickly issued a simple announcement that the year-end bonuses are scheduled to be paid around March 4th. However, there was still no mention of the still partially withheld bonus as well as the matter on layoffs. For the company, there are also several other points worth noting. First of all, borrowing from banks have become ever more difficult. Since the bank has set up extra lending precautions, any housing-related loan are strictly watched and applications are also meticulously investigated. As such, bank-level finances are essentially blocked and bonds, their second flow of money, is also a currently difficult issue. Second, they are facing massive debt repayments. According to partial statistics, Country Garden has over 11 billion US dollars in American bonds. Under current situations, the repayment of this large amount of debt is no small task and only makes matters worse. In addition, a number of Country Garden subsidiaries have also become executors due to a default involving $240 million, further adding onto the financial struggles. Third, Country Garden sales have been in the negatives for the first time in 2021, and its share price will likely continue to drop with estimates suggesting up to a 30% drop in value over the year. Country Garden even has further financial liabilities outside of the company itself. The thing about this list of issues is that it is applicable to many of China's real estate companies as well. According to a report released by CRIC, a Chinese property consultancy, the total sales in 29 major Chinese cities in January was 14.29 million square meters a 46% drop compared to the same period in 2021. Among these cities, the total sales in the largest four cities, namely Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen, was 2.85 million square meters, a 38% drop year-on-year. In January, 90% of the top 100 real estate enterprises also fell in value year-on-year, and over 40% of them saw a sales drop of over 40% with top enterprises such as Jindi and Vanke falling by 40 to 50 percent. In addition, housing prices in remote areas of China have also collapsed. In our recent video, we had covered the situation with Hegang, where housing prices fell by over 90 percent, and now this Hegangization is happening in other areas such as the economic regions of Yangtze and Pearl River deltas. As such, many speculate that China's real estate bubble is on the brink of bursting. On February 14th, Radio Free Asia reported that after checking house trading websites, it was found that in Huainan City, a pre-owned two-bedroom apartment suite of 77 square meters is only worth 15.8 thousand US dollars. In Huainan's Zijin Shanzhuang, a similar 75 square meters apartment suite would only cost around 14.3 thousand US dollars. Even cheaper would be a 57 square meter apartment unit for just a little over 7.9 thousand US dollars. Such low priced apartment units are also quite common in the Guangdong province, with many 50 square meter apartment suites for less than 15.8 thousand US dollars. In response, many financial experts have pointed out that these are signs of the end of the housing bubble in China. To many, this is just the beginning of housing drops, with larger cities following soon after. 
According to the Shanghai Real Estate Research Institute's report on property listings throughout 100 cities in December of 2021, the total combined area of listed residences totaled 521 million square meters, the highest it has been since 2016. This number only increased for 37 consecutive months, indicating a trend of increased housing supply. To many experts, this is not only caused by decreased population growth, but is also affected by the recession caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and the disruptions on commercial housing developments, leading to an oversupply of houses. In November of 2017, business magnate Jack Ma said in his speech at the China Global Investment Summit that housing prices in China have spiked over the last eight years, and that in the next eight years, the least valuable commodity may instead turn out to be the house. Now his predictions seems to be coming true step by step. Even Vanco Group's chairman Yu Liang noted just how evident the shrinkage of the housing market has been in China. Causing further economic stress. To him, this sort of recession is inevitable, and likens these recent years to the dark ages of real estate, where profits continue to dwindle, forcing everyone to adapt and respond to the changes by any means necessary. As he said, for the future, this year will be an uphill battle. We will either live or die, for there is no in between. The plight of the real estate industry is not just a decline in housing prices, but also a depletion of liquidity as well as current residencies. Because of the slow progress of home sales and the inability to refinance, large debts are approaching for many and will need to be repaid. Ever since Evergrande's debt crisis, debt explosions, layoffs, and asset sales have also become just another set of commonly seen keywords throughout the news. The uproar of wage claims from country garden employees is really just another crisis that real estate companies need to face in these difficult times. With the inevitable bursting of China's real estate bubble, an even bigger crisis may come at any time.